In this video, I'm going to speak briefly to the Mochley's test of sphericity, which is a test outputted by SPSS automatically when you do the within subjects ANOVA or repeated measures ANOVA. So in this case, I'm just retracing the steps I did for the Weatherall study where they looked at anxiety. When you click on options, you'll see that it says homogeneity tests. If you click that, it will do nothing because we do not have a between subjects factor in this analysis. When you have within subjects variables, SPSS will output the results automatically for Mochley's test of sphericity. And here it is here. I spoke to it briefly in a previous video. But the main thing to point out here is that Mochley's test of sphericity, much like the Levine's test of homogeneity of variance, is something that you quote unquote want to be not significant. You want the p-value to be greater than 0.05. And in this case, the p-value is greater than 0.05, and that means that I can then interpret the sphericity assumed results. Now, if I observed a significant p-value here, p less than 0.05, that's fine. I could just look at the Hünfeldt adjusted results, and the adjustment is in the degrees of freedom. You get the same f-value, but the Hünfeldt adjustment is adjusting the degrees of freedom, which impacts the p-value at some decimal place. In this case here, you can't actually see the difference at three decimal places, but if I pushed it out, you would see it. And also, the sphericity assumption is not violated, so we're getting close p-values. So I'll note that Mochley's W is a value related to the Mochley's test of sphericity, but people don't report that. People report, typically they'll report the chi-square value and the degrees of freedom, which are always one less than the number of levels. We had three levels, so it's two. The p-value and I do think there's some value in reporting the epsilon value, and you'll have to choose one. And I think overall, the Hünfeldt is your best bet in most cases. There are some exceptions, but mostly the Hünfeldt will steer you right. And epsilon will get smaller in magnitude as you violate the sphericity assumption more greatly. So a value of 1.0 would imply that sphericity is perfectly observed, whereas as the value gets lower and lower and lower, like 0 0.6, 0 0.5, the violation of sphericity t it tends to be fairly substantial. So what is sphericity? I talk about this in more detail in the advanced section of the textbook, but I'm going to mention briefly here that the assumption of sphericity is essentially saying that the standard errors are equal. So the standard error, the difference between the means, are equal. So this is a difference between the means. It has a standard error of the difference between the mean standard error, the difference between the mean. There are three standard errors of the difference between the means, and it's saying that they're roughly equal to each other within sampling fluctuations. And when you get a significant Mochley's test, p less than 0.05, it's saying that the standard errors are not all equal to each other, and that is a violation of the assumption, and so you can't look at the results that are sphericity assumed. You have to then look at the Hünfeldt.